So, so it's a 3D fish tank. Yep. But when you're looking at it in elevation, you want yep. it to be transparent. Yep. It's a process that if you are using Revit, if you are using BIM, every single design team should be doing this. I've got a lot of my architect friends out there. You are actually the ones who need to hear this more than anything. But right. keeping, even if you draft everything, you should still keep the model on in the view. Exactly. Um, I was wondering if you could do a, uh, if you bring a family in, can you make parts of that family have transparent um, material in a hidden line when you do a section? Basically, I want to have a fish tank and I, I want to see through it on building sections because they're using the fish tank as their uh, backsplash. So, so it's a 3D fish tank. Yep. But when you're looking at it in elevation, you want yep. it to be transparent. Yep, in hidden line, not, not in, because uh, hidden line will be what I put on the pages. I would just do a filter for that, um, okay. and just use use a specific property for just that one. Because I, I wouldn't necessarily build that into the family. Because if you start building into the family, you're going to see it in views where maybe you don't want you where you want to see the full fish tank. You know what I mean? Right, because right, right. if the only way to get that done building into the family is that's basically what the look of the object is. I mean, in theory, um, unless you want to do annotation overrides, which I'm assuming you don't want to do, like hide all the graphic stuff and only show, um, you know, like they, like, uh, like your, uh, some of your default Autodesk families have where you're not seeing the 3D objects, you're seeing the mm -hmm. annotated versions of them, like right. case, case work and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's what you want to do. I don't know. I mean, it, would you would you rather it be the three D object or would you? Mm -hmm. That's typically what I do. Yeah. So so yeah, that, that would be the the two approaches I would take. So the, you know the. Let's build a fish tank. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think I had the same issue with uh, glass, and the solution was to create a filter to give it transparency. Well, that that exact and and what you use, you know what what you filter it by um, is up to you, I guess, and what the object is, right? So you're saying there you're filtering by um, the material, or you're using the material as the guide. Well, here, let me, let me build a fish tank. It's not gonna be parametric. Yeah, and that's not, fine. And it's, and it's not gonna be fun. I mean, it's not gonna be uh, even. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> There's your fish tank. Hey. <laughs> Give yep, it a so little. I have, yep, I have that as glass, and then I have an object inside of there for the water. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. There's your fish tank. So now if we take this, I'll assign this as glass. Just mm -hmm. Okay. So there we go. There's your glass and water. <clears throat> so what you want is when you're looking at it like this, you want it to be just dashed and you want it to be, do um, you want to see the detail of all this stuff or just a box that's dashed? I, I was hoping to see like kind of through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, uh, right. So, so what I was saying is, is if you build it into the family, your mm -hmm. best bet would be taking the objects. Right. And then, mm -hmm. yeah. Get the void out of there. You know, taking the objects saying, I don't want to see these in, front, back, left, and right, right? Oh, uh -huh. right. And now you're not seeing 3D anymore when you're orthogonal. So when you're in an elevation or building section, and then what you can do is you can, you know, by building uh, uh, symbolic lines. So if I did oh, yeah. inline projection, um, I can trace, do whatever I want. You know, I can lock these to it, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, I get whatever what it is. So now what you're doing yeah. is you're you're not seeing 3D objects anymore, and I'll, I'll bring it into the project so you can see. If now I get what not. you're saying there. So, what if I do want to see the 3D objects? Right. So now, right, this isn't 3D. It's like this. Yep. Right. But if I go into my one of these elevations, uh, actually, I need to go into one where I actually have where I actually have the drawn. Sorry. There's my blue. If I go in here, 
right? You're yep. seeing the annotated objects. Yep. Right. <clears throat> but if you wanted to see, um, if you wanted to see the 3D objects, but transparent mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and hidden line, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to... Um, I don't need to see hidden line, just transparent. Just, just transparent. to be able to see through. Yep. Right, right. So yeah. what you would do there instead is, let me get rid of this crap. What I would do, I should say, is, is use a filter for that. And... And filters are one of those things that is like the uh, lost art of Revit. I don't know. It's just one of those things that, that doesn't get taught as much, but it's so stupid powerful. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so now if I load this in here, now I'm seeing, right, the 3D object again. Mm -hmm. But what I would do is, because, you know, as it stands, it's a generic model. I can't just go in here and change all generic models. That would screw things up, right? So I'm in visibility graphics. That would change all generic models, which we don't want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you do is create a filter. So I'm going to click Add. I'm going to click New. And I'm going to click Add again. Look at all these dialogues. Freaking Revit, man. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say Fish Tank. This is why people don't teach these. Because, I mean, look, you're 17 dialogues deep. Mm -hmm. All right. So Fish Tank. And then you're going to set generic models. And then you can set up a rule. And you can say... Um, I want to do by type name. I want to do by family name. I want to do by whatever. I don't think, yeah, you can do family name. By family name equals, and then I'd click fish tank, which is family one. So now what it's allowing me to do is, if I add this now here, I have graphic override settings, like I would in VG, right, in battle mm -hmm. categories, but I have it for just that family now. Mm. So now I can say, uh, give me transparency at 50, and if I want it, I can even change the, the lines to dashed in gray or whatever. It's dash. Hmm. And so uh, I'll add another generic model in there just so that uh, I don't know, have one in here. It's furniture. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I wanted to add one, though. It would have been cool. <laughs> Shit. I'll add some columns or something. And of course, they're below it because columns are stupid like that. But mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so, so so now only that object is going to be modified. Got it. Okay. But of yeah, course, that... now it's a filter, um, so it's only per view. So you'd have to, you know, create a template or apply that filter to every view that you want to see this in. You know. Um, sure. But otherwise, and 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 and, and uh, because this is for learning, I'll I'll show you a quick way uh, for, for for someone who who may not be familiar with how to do something like that. You can also, you can create view templates just to do specific things. So you don't necessarily have to have like, here's my section view template and I have to apply it to all my sections. If you wanted, what I can say is, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna say, let me create a view template from current view. And I'm gonna call this fish tank view. Mm -hmm. And you can uncheck everything if you wanted. Of course, there's no check all here because Autodesk loves to destroy our lives. <laughs> but I can uncheck all of these and I can say the only thing I want to do is use my filters, filters, mm -hmm. which is right here. So now I'm creating a view template that only applies filters. So then I can go into, if I have another section here, Hopefully Revit doesn't make me a liar, but that's that's a sim. Give me a real section. Here we go. <clears throat> so if I go in here and oops, I'm gonna change the scale a little. So there's my object, and this is section two. So if I go down to sections, I can apply a template property. So I just right click to that apply template properties. And click OK, and there it is. And it's and because it did the checkbox, if you have other template and other properties applied there, those won't get affected. All it's doing is applying the filter now to that view. Cool. Perfect. That does that answer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I should do it. Two out of three is not bad. Right. <laughs>